Hello, and welcome to your yoga practice today. My name is Mariah, and I will be your guide through these various asanas, which are designed to help recharge you for the day. Whether you're doing these first thing in the morning, for a midday break, or at the end of the day, this is a great way to help increase a little more mobility and functional strength throughout your entire body. So for this particular practice, I always recommend having something to serve as a yoga mat. So whether that's a towel or a blanket or a regular yoga mat, if you have that. Also, if you don't have a padded surface, you'll wanna have a blanket or something you can put underneath your knees and possibly your hands. So let's get started. Get into a comfortable seated position, whatever that means for you. For me, it's usually sitting on top of a folded up blanket in Sukhasana like crisscross applesauce. For many people, this looks like laying on your back or straightening your legs out in front of you. If you're seated upright, rock back and forth and find a sweet spot where you can sit up tall enough for your whole diaphragm to move freely, but you feel relaxed. Release your hands to your thighs or your knees and decide if you want your palms facing upward or downward. Take an inhale and squeeze your shoulders up and into your ears. Exhale, roll them back and down. And start to blink your eyes closed or just soften your gaze. Begin by drawing some attention into your breath and by checking in with yourself today. Breathe in and out through your nose. And if you'd like, you can take on your ocean wave or ujjayi breathing by softly constricting the throat. This will create a little bit of heat in your body and help develop mental focus on the breath. Exaggerated, it sounds something like this. The ears can be a much quieter hum. As you ground into your breath, begin to let go of your day so far. Let go of any heavy energy or negative self-talk or intrusive thoughts that you may have brought into this space. Let your mind fill with the simple sensation of inhale, exhale. If you've got any yawns or sighs brewing, feel free to let those out. Otherwise, return to a rhythmic breath in and out through the nose. Unclench your jaw and soften the space between your brows. Let your elbows soften and your shoulders slide a little further down your back. And take a few more deep breaths here, grounding into the rhythm and the energy of your breath today. our centering by taking a few rounds of deep cleansing breath together. Feel free to blink your eyes open so you can see me. Flip your palms to face upward. As you inhale, float your arms up nice and high. Hands can cut to the top, they don't have to. And exhale, take your breath out, float your hands back down. Deep inhale through the nose, use the whole breath to float your hands up. Pause at the top. Slow exhale out the mouth. Last one, deepest yet. Lift your arms up high, inhale. Slow exhale as your arms float back down. All right, so now let's incorporate some of this centered mind and deep breathing into our asana or our physical practice. So rock forward onto your hands and knees into what's called your tabletop position. This is 
a great place to put a blanket or some extra padding underneath your knees or underneath your hands or both if you would like. If you're feeling any crunchiness in those joints, definitely add some extra padding. Take good care of yourself here. Now we'll start out with some spinal movements. So as you breathe in, drop your belly, lift your tail and your gaze up high for your cow pose. Breathe out, curl your chin to your chest, tuck your tailbone and push the ground away. Separate the shoulder. Breathe in, drop your belly, lift your gaze high, tail high. Exhale, dome up your back, expand the space between the shoulders, chin to chest, tuck your tail. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze and tail high. Exhale, dome up your back, chin to chest, tuck the tail. You can even lift onto your fingertips for a deeper stretch. Inhale, hammock your belly, open your heart, tail high. Exhale, curl and push the earth away. Let's take four more of these and take it at your own pace. You can move with me. Or you can slow it down, speed it up. You can add an extra little movement like some side to side rocking or some elbow bending. Yoga is not a one-size-fits-all practice. It's always catered to our anatomies and our body's needs from moment to moment. All right, start to make your way back to stillness in your tabletop position. Now from here, plant your right hand directly underneath your nose. Breathe in and sweep your left arm up to the sky. Now open up your side body and your chest here. So push to stack left shoulder on top of right. If it's available to you, look to your top thumb. Inhale, squeeze your belly in. As you exhale, push hard into your right hand. Look a little bit further up. One more breath in. As you breathe out, I'll change direction so you can see me. Sweep your left arm underneath your right. Left shoulder and cheek come all the way down if available. Walk your right fingertips forward. This is called thread the needle. It's a great stretch for the shoulder blades. You can stay here and press your right shoulder down or if you'd like more twisting, lift your right arm high and tuck it towards your left back pocket. Two deep conscious breaths here. If you lifted your right hand, put it back down. Inhale, push into the right hand. Lift your left arm back up high. And exhale, release your left hand back down. Don't get overwhelmed by the breath. Do the best you can to keep up with it. Knowing that no one is perfect, the attempt is what matters. Plant your left hand directly underneath your nose. Then inhale, squeeze your right arm up to the sky. Aim to stack shoulder on top of shoulder. Look up as high as you feel okay with. Inhale, squeeze your belly in. As you exhale, push into your left hand. Pull your right shoulder back a little more. Deep breath in. As you breathe out, exhale, slide the right arm underneath the left arm. Right shoulder and cheek come down if available. Walk your left fingertips further forward. You can stay here or to add a little more stretching and spinal twisting, inhale your left arm high and draw it to your right back pocket and crease your inner thigh. Wherever you land, do not compare yourself to anyone else. Show gratitude to yourself for where you're at and breathe into that gratitude. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Release your left hand down if you lifted it. Inhale, peel your right arm off the floor. Lift it all the way back up. And exhale, release both hands back down. All right, if we've lost track of our breath, we want to get that back. So come to a seat. Put your hands to your heart. Two cleansing breaths here. Deep breath in. Let it go out your mouth. 
deeper breath in and sigh it out. All right, let's come into our next asana. So if you have your blanket, you may want to move it out of the way or you can roll it up into a little log and slide it underneath your pelvis. If your hips are really tight, this can be a lovely option. So first trying it without the blanket, draw your knees max distance apart, big toes together. Press your bum back, reach your arms forward and let your forehead ground onto the floor. It's not reaching the floor, that's very normal, it's okay. Lift your hips as high as you need to. You can even walk your knees in some for your forehead to come down. So the back and hip extension will come in time, but we want to be able to ground into the shape comfortably. You can also take that little blanket roll and place it underneath your pelvic floor to add a little bit of extra support in the hip flexion. Once you're here, leaning back into your breath. Let your belly expand into your inner thighs with each breath in. Nothing but love and gratitude for the shape of your body and its abilities here. On your next breath in, claw your fingertips a little further forward to deepen the stretch within your shoulder. If you'd like, you can press onto your fingertips, into your forearms, elevate the upper arms and feel more push and opening in your chest and shoulders. Inhale. As you exhale, press into the forearms, let the bum sink further back towards the heels. Take one more deep breath in. One more deep breath. Good, staying in your child's pose and turning so you can see this. Walk both hands toward the top right corner of your mat, maybe further if it's available to you. For the deepest stretch here, stack left hand on top of right and let your forehead fall back into the ground in the space between your biceps. And you're stretching through the left side bone. Breathe in, lift your hips up a couple of inches, as you exhale, imagine pinning your left sits bone down to the ground. Breathe into your left side rib cage. Deep inhale. Deep exhale. Walk your hands back through center and walk them towards the top left corner of your mat, maybe further, depending on your mobility today. You can stack right hand on top of left if you'd like and let your forehead sink to the ground. Lift your hips up a few inches. Inhale. As you exhale, press your hips back, pin down through the right glute and sits bone especially. Send your breath to the right side of your rib cage. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Slowly walk your hands back through center and begin to peel your way back up into your tabletop position. We'll be coming off the knees here, but this next shape will require some wrist strength. So if your wrists are feeling a little crunchy, grab your blanket, put it underneath your hands. Now to set up for success, whether or not you're using a blanket, spread your fingers as far apart as you can. Press your weight into every corner of your hands, so not dumping into the heels of the hands. Ground into all 10 fingerprints and into this little spot between the forefinger and the thumb. Come here. Tuck your toes, lift your knees up into a brief high plank, and lift your hips up high. Resist the urge to move the hands or feet closer towards each other. If we move the hands and feet too close, we don't get a very good stretch here. So this is your downward dog. I highly recommend bending the knees as much as you need to whew, to access this shape. So if you're like me, you might get a little crunchy snap, crackle, pops. If your hamstrings are feeling really tight here, press one heel towards the ground, bend the other knee, then swap it out. Now focus on adding your breath to it. So inhale, bend one knee. Exhale, switch it out. You might feel like your shoulders are on fire here. You can always come down and take a break by putting your knees down. Or you might challenge yourself to hold this for a little while. Depends on what you need today. Relax. 
relax into your neck. All right, now to refine this pose and make it the deepest stretch possible, press the eyes of your elbows forward. Keep your knees nice and bent, but press your chest towards your thighs as hard as you can. Then take a deep breath in. As you exhale, drive your heels towards the ground straight as you can. Nod your head, yes. And shake your head, no. Good, push your tailbone up high. One more deep breath in. Deep breath out. And come back down onto your knees. All right, if you were using a blanket underneath your hands, go ahead and push that off to the side. We'll do a little bit more heat work to really make sure that our strength portion is ready for the day, that we've fired up the legs and the core a little bit. If you're doing this later at night, you might like to skip this section or take a little bit longer to do some deeper stretches. So, coming into a forearm plank, come onto your right elbow and your left elbow. You can always take your knee plank by walking your knees back and pressing into a diagonal line here. So not hips over knees. We have hips pressed forward, puff the shoulder blades up. Stay here or tuck your toes and lift your kneecaps for your full forearm plank. Take two deep breaths here, keep the bum nice and low and puff up the shoulder. All right, walk your feet towards your hands. So we're coming into a pose that's a lot like down dog, but easier on the hands and wrists. This is called dolphin pose. Feel free to bend your knees as much as you need to. Your feet also might not be as close to your elbows. Press your chest towards your thighs. Two deep breaths here. All right, two more rounds of this. Stay strong. Walk your feet back into your forearm plank. You can always put your knees down. Two deep breaths here. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Walk your feet up. Feel free to bend your knees. Looking towards your hands. Resist the urge to let your head come down. Maybe tiptoe your feet in a little bit more. Two breaths. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Walk your feet back. Option to put the knees down one more time. Three breaths here. Oh, I'm shaking a little bit. All right, last time in Dolphin. Walk those feet up. Look forward, press your chest towards your thighs. Three breaths. Walk your toes in a millimeter more. Last breath. Ooh, all right. Release your knees down. And let's press back to our embryo pose. So walk your knees just wide enough for your belly to fit in between. Release your right cheek down and sweep your arms behind you. Let's give our shoulders a little break. If you'd like, you can come onto your forehead and shake your head no a little to massage it out. If you'd like to take any cleansing breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth, feel free to do that. All right, if you've stayed on your right cheek, switch to your left cheek and take a couple more deep breaths here. Start to press your way up through your tabletop position. Let's do a couple of standing poses. So we stand all the way up. These poses are more for a little bit of heat within the legs since we've done a lot of spinal stretching and opening and some upper body work. So facing the long edge of your yoga mat, walk your feet out nice and far apart. Have your toes parallel. Lift your arms up high. This is our star pose. Spread your fingers apart, shift weight to your heels, pick up your toes and press them back down. Softly press your tailbone forward. If your rib cage is pulled up, press it back down. Feel the energy from the tips of your toes all the way up through the tips of your fingers. Deep breath in. 
deep breath out. All right, keeping your feet nice and wide, drive your toes back and your heels forward. Bend your knees, bend your elbows. This is called goddess pose. Now, if you'd like, you can sway it out a little bit here. Help your hips open, knees open, ankles open. This is a very heat building pose. So if you'd like to add some coolness to it, you can always take a break by standing back up straight or putting your hands to your heart. You choose. If you're working on strength, challenge yourself to stay low. If you're finding balance, do a little bit of both. All right, start to find stillness in your goddess pose. Press your heels a little further forward, toes a little further back. Zip your pubic bone up towards your face, tailbone downward, rib cage down. Squeeze your shoulders together. If you'd like, take forefinger and thumb together. This is Anjali Mudra. We're looking at the world and ourselves through the eyes of love. Deep breath in. Exhale, sink a little bit lower into your goddess. Nice. Keep breathing. We hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Straighten your legs. Draw your toes in. Shimmy out your hips a little bit. Ooh. All right. From here, keep your feet where they are, but angle your toes in just a tiny bit and reach forward as far as you can. Shoot your sits bones back. When you can't go any further, release your hands down. See if they can come to the floor. If they're not coming to the floor, you can always grab a chair or if you have yoga blocks, this can be a great way to access this pose. Even hands on the wall. If we can get the hands to the ground, walk them further back between your legs. Use your hands to pull the crown of your head towards the ground. So remember, what matters here is not how far we get. It's getting a good stretch, being in our breath, being in the moment. So each inhale, lift up just a tiny bit. Each exhale, pull with your hands, drop a little more weight into your toes. Think about surrendering to gravity here rather than trying to force it. Two more breaths. Add a soft bend to your knees, hands to your hips. Slowly curl all the way back up. Whew. All right, so let's take goddess and our wide leg fold one more time. So feet nice and wide, heels forward, toes back. Inhale your arms up. Exhale, bend your knees, bend your elbows. Press the heels a little further forward, toes a little further back. Zip your pubic bone towards your face. Press your knees back, squeeze your shoulders together. Maybe take Anjali Mudra. Inhale. Exhale, sink a little bit lower. Woo. Inhale, lift an inch. Exhale, sink an inch and a millimeter. Good, stay here or pulse your tail with me for five, four, three, Woo. two, one, straighten legs, straighten arms, pivot your toes slightly in, heels out, reach forward as far as you can, grab a chair or a wall, or release your hands all the way down. This time, if you'd like, you can grab onto your ankles and use that to pull deeper into the stretch. Take three deep breaths for it and find a balance here between pulling, finding your edge, stretching as deep as you can, and also surrendering and resting into the pose. One more deep breath. Put your hands down if they're lifted. Pivot your toes back out, bend your knees, hands to hips. Slowly curl all the way back up. All right, let's end with a balancing pose for today. So this will be a little bit of core, some great work for longevity and muscle stability. If this is really challenging for you, you can always hold onto a wall or have a chair beside you to hold on. Step your feet back together. We'll start with the right leg as our standing leg. Start with your hands to your hips. And kick your left toes out, your left knee pointing towards the side. Zip your right hip back in. Now pull your left foot into your right leg. You might start here with your left toe mound on the ground. Push the left knee open. If you want to go higher, I recommend start by looking down and slowly lifting the foot higher, higher, higher. Maybe crossing ankle over knee. 
Maybe you reach down and pull the left foot into the right thigh. Now, if you're having any kind of knee pain in either leg, rewind. For the left leg, lower it tight. For the right leg, micro bend a little bit. You can stay here or draw hands to heart or even build some tall branches in this tree pose. Some days we're shrubs, some days we're tall oaks, some days we're windy trees. There is beauty in all of these things. You still wanna challenge your balance? Try looking forward, up, or even closing your eyes. Breathe. Release your hands back to your heart if they're lifted. Unwind your left foot. If you'd like, you can shimmy out your right foot a little, draw some circles with the ankle. It's pretty normal for the foot to be a little sore after a balancing pose. Other side. Put your hands on your hips. Put your left toes out, zip your right hip back in. Pull the left foot inside the right leg. Push the left knee open. You might stay here. Or start by looking down and pulling the foot up as high as you would like to take it. I recommend trying to keep the body even for the sake of even flexibility. But don't force it if this leg and this hip is just saying, nope, mm -mm, not today. Respect where your body's limits are today. You might pull your hands to your heart or grow some tall branches. You might wobble. You might fall and come back. It's okay. Round into this side, deep breaths. Maybe looking forward or up or even closing the eyes. Good, pull your hands back to your heart, unwind your left leg. Maybe draw some circles at the right angle. All right, nice job. So, like all yoga practices, we tend to end with a little time in our Shavasana corpse pose or ending meditation. So again, if this is the end of your day, this could be a good part for you to come back into for a deep stretch and then your ending meditation. If you're starting off your day, hopefully you're feeling nice and energized. So from here, come on to your back, knees bent, feet planted. You can stay here or kick your feet up to the sky. Or if you'd like a little more hip and low back opening, Bend your knees outside your ribcage towards your armpits. Flex your feet up like you're trying to step on the ceiling. Then crunch up and grab what's there. Could be your thighs, your knee pits, your calves, maybe the pinky edges of your feet. Pull your knees down towards the ground outside the ribcage. Make sure your head, neck, and shoulders can come back down. This is called happy baby. You might feel a little bit vulnerable here. That's okay. Embrace it and embrace your inner child. Rock back and forth, kick out a leg, pull your feet together like butterfly. You can even take a few little happy baby giggles here. Laughter makes great medicine. <laughs> you can stay here as long as you want, but when you're ready, let's come into our ending meditation. So release your feet back down. If you have some low back pain, you might stay here for your Shavasana. But for classic Shavasana, we have legs long, mats distance apart, arms out to the sides with palms facing up. Notice your low back. If you feel any pinching, you might softly reset your hips and your pelvic tilt. And shimmy your shoulder blades comfortably underneath you. Blink your eyes closed and slowly shake your head no to relax through the back of your neck. Swallow to soften your throat and blink your eyes closed or soften your gaze. Take a deep inhale and retain the breath at the top. Exhale, sigh it out your mouth. Let your whole body become still and fully compliant to the soft weight of gravity stabilizing you grounding you towards the earth. My challenge for you today is to take your thoughts from a deluge to a river, to a stream, to a trickle, to a drop, and maybe even stopping altogether. The 
Allow the mind to quiet, the body to quiet. Take this time to rest and refill your cup. If you're new to the yoga practice, we take a couple of minutes here. I'll let you know when it's time to wake up. Slowly begin to awaken from your Shavasana, taking your time with it. Wherever you may be practicing, whatever part of your day that you're in, it's such an honor to be able to join you for your practice in this way. Enjoy the rest of your day and go in peace. Namaste.